In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the dot product of two vectors, as well as how to work with some of the applications of the dot product. Let's check it out. All right, so you've learned how to add and subtract vectors, and you've also learned how to multiply a scalar by a vector. But is it possible to multiply two vectors? As you probably noticed so far in your studies of vectors, performing operations like addition and subtraction on vectors is a lot different than it is just performing those operations on numbers or scalar quantities. Multiplication of vectors is no different. Because we have a direction, it's not as easy as just taking two numbers and multiplying them together. In fact, there are actually two different ways to multiply two vectors, but we're only going to cover one of them in this video because the other one is nasty. You can check out the second way in this linked video here. So let's take a look at the definition of the dot product, and then we'll also solve some example problems involving the dot product. Let's check it out. All right, so the dot product is a very simple but powerful calculation that can tell you a lot about two vectors. Now, before I go through a few examples of how to apply the dot product, I want to go over a few key points about the dot product. And we'll start with specifically two definitions or formulas for the dot product that you can use depending on the scenario. So imagine we have two vectors and we'll call them u and v. We can say that the dot product u dot v, that's how we write the dot product of two vectors, is equal to the product of the magnitudes of each of those vectors. So we're multiplying the magnitudes of each of those vectors by the cosine of the angle in between the two vectors. That's the first definition of the dot product. The second definition is for those same two vectors, u dot v, the dot product is gonna be equal to u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. Well, what does that mean? Well, for a vector u, let's say u is just some vector with components u1, u2, okay? And the same goes for vector v. That's just gonna be v1, v2, okay? So those are my two, those are my two vectors. If I take a look at my dot product definition, all this is telling me to do is take the first component in each vector and multiply them together, and then add the second component in each vector and multiply them together. And the result of that is going to be the dot product of those two vectors. Now, two really important points here about the dot product. The first is that when we perform a dot product calculation, the result is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity, which is kind of counterintuitive because you're taking two vectors. If you're multiplying two vectors, you would think that you end up with another vector. Now that is not the case with the dot product. When you start looking at the cross product of two vectors, you will get a vector quantity, but that's a topic for another day. The second really important piece of information is that if you take the dot product of two vectors and you get zero, that tells us that the angle in between those two vectors is 90 degrees. And we have a fancy term for when that happens. We call those two vectors orthogonal. So now that you know a couple of formula definitions for the dot product and two key pieces of information, it's time to start applying the dot product to some examples. Now you're gonna see that depending on the type of example you're given, you're gonna apply a different definition of the dot product. In this first example, we're calculating the dot product when we're given the magnitudes of our vectors and the angle in between those two vectors. So in this particular example, I have a magnitude of six for my u vector, a magnitude of 10 for my v vector, and the angle in between those two vectors is 60 degrees. Now, if you look back to your two definitions of the dot product, one of the definitions says that the dot product of two vectors u and v is going to be equal to the product of the magnitudes of those vectors. And we're also going to multiply of the angle in between them. So all we really need to do in an example like this, where we're given the magnitudes and the angle in between the vectors is simply sub that information into this definition of the dot product. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by just replacing the magnitude of u with six. I'm going to replace the magnitude of v with 10 and the cosine of my angle is just going to become the cosine of 60 degrees. And all I really have to do is use your understanding of trigonometry to remember that cos of 60 is just one half. And this whole thing is going to end up being 30. And you'll remember that that is not a vector quantity. That is just a scalar quantity. And since that dot product is not equal to zero, we know that these two vectors are not orthogonal. And we can check that because our angle was given at 60 degrees, not 90 degrees. So that's just one example of a type of problem you could solve by applying the dot product definition. Two magnitudes and an angle in between those two vectors. Let's take a look at another example. Now in the second example, we're gonna look at how to calculate the dot product when we're given two vectors but no angle. So we don't have the magnitudes of these vectors and we don't have the angle like we did in the last example, but we do have two vectors defined as u and v. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna think back to our definitions of the dot product. And we know that that second definition tells us we can take 
the, the dot product of two vectors by multiplying the first component of each vector. In this case, that would be negative three and four. And then we're gonna add the multiplication of the second component in each vector, which in this case would be six times two. And so if I write that out, all I really need to do is say, I'm gonna take negative three, I'm gonna multiply by four, right? Those are the first components of each vector here. And I'm gonna add the multiplication of six times two, right? So I've got an expression like this. Now, all that's really left here is just to clean this up. And what you're gonna notice in this particular situation is that negative three times four is 12 and six plus two is also 12. So isn't it just the case here that we happen to get a dot product of zero? And if you think back to that very important key point earlier in the video, a dot product of zero tells us that two vectors are orthogonal or the angle in between them is 90 degrees. And as you move forward in your studies of vectors, that's gonna be a very powerful piece of information that you're going to find really helpful when you're analyzing more complex vectors problems. So that's just another example of how you can apply the dot product. In this case, we're calculating the dot product when we're given two vectors and no angles. Let's take a look at one more example. All right, so this last example is a really cool application of the dot product, and it involves finding the angle in between two vectors that are given. You can see here, I've got a U vector and a V vector. And let's say I wanna find out what the angle in between those two vectors is. And now it should be no surprise that we can do this with our dot product definition because our formula for the dot product has the cosine of theta in it. And that's the angle in between two vectors. So all we would really have to do is take our dot product definition, rearrange it and solve for theta, solve for our unknown angle. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna start with our basic dot product definition of two vectors, which tells me that I can find the dot product of two vectors by taking the magnitude of each vector, multiplying them together, and then multiplying by the cosine of the angle in between them. But if you take a look at this formula, the quantity that I'm interested in is way over here, and it's being weighed down by the magnitudes of the vectors and a cosine. So my job is to isolate theta, and I'm gonna do that using a little bit of algebra. So the first thing I wanna do is divide both sides by the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, right? So if I divide out those magnitudes on the right-hand side, they're gonna cancel out, right? You can, you can imagine these kind of just disappearing. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna end up with sort of a new variation of that dot product formula where I have the dot product of the vectors in the numerator and I'm dividing by the product of the magnitudes of those vectors. And that's all gonna be equal to the cosine of theta. So I'm just gonna clean up my whiteboard a little bit using a little bit of editing magic. And just like that, I've got the cosine of theta on the left-hand side, and I've got the dot product of those vectors divided by the product of the magnitudes on the right-hand side. And now I'm ready to work with this formula to start solving for theta. And to do that, all I'm gonna do is start by calculating the dot product of u and v in the numerator. I know that I can find the dot product of u and v by multiplying those first components and then adding the multiplication of the second components, just like we did in the previous example. So if I go ahead and do that, I've got negative seven, I'm multiplying by six, and I'm gonna add two times 11, and that is the numerator of my expression. And I'm gonna stop and take a look at the denominator next. I need to find out what the magnitude of u is and the magnitude of v is. And unlike our first example, I'm not given those magnitudes explicitly. But remember, when you have a Cartesian vector like this one and this one, we can calculate the magnitude of each of those vectors by adding the square of each component in the vector and taking the square root. So if I wanted to find the magnitude of this u vector, I would just take negative seven and square that. I would then add two and square that, and then I would take the square root of that entire thing. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this v vector and multiply the two of them in the denominator, just like my formula tells me to right here. So if I go ahead and do that same thing for v, I'm gonna have six squared, I'm gonna add 11 squared, and I'm gonna take the square root of that mess there. And you can see that I'm multiplying this root by this root. And this is turning into a pretty messy little calculation. That's okay though, if you take it piece by piece, all you're really doing is just multiplying two sets of numbers and adding them together. And when I do that here, I get negative 20. So my numerator simplifies nicely to negative 20, 
And looking at each magnitude calculation here, taking it piece by piece, you're gonna see that we get the square root of 53 and the square root of 157, which may not look that much nicer. But remember, we're not really interested in what this is. We're trying to solve for theta here. And right now I have the cosine of theta. So really all I wanna do is take the cosine inverse of this nasty mess, and that's gonna give me the angle in between these two vectors. Now, depending on your comfort level with your calculator, you may be able to punch in this entire expression and just take the cos inverse of it. And when I do that on my calculator, it looks something like this. And you can see that we're gonna get approximately 102.7 degrees. So that tells me that the angle in between these two vectors is approximately 102.7 degrees. And that is the end of that rather long, complex looking problem. But if you take a second to look back, all you're really doing is rearranging that dot product formula. You're calculating the dot product just like we did in the previous example. You're applying your understanding of the magnitude of a vector by squaring each component, taking the square root, and then you're just taking the cos inverse to find the angle in between those two vectors. This is definitely the most complex of the three examples covered in this video, but it shows you just how much you can do with this dot product calculation and how much you can learn about two vectors by analyzing their dot product. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more examples of the dot product being applied, check out one of these videos. And if you're feeling really brave and you want to learn about the cross product, click this video right here. But be warned, it's not for the faint of heart.